A convicted pedophile moves into your neighbourhood. He's been to jail, done his time. Should he remain anonymous? Or for your own protection, should you and your family be informed? In Britain, they're not hypothetical questions. When an eight-year-old girl was abducted and murdered, a national newspaper outed known pedophiles throughout the country. It published thousands of names, their photos, even the towns they lived in. At first, many applauded the paper's bravery, but in its zeal to name and shame, the paper mistakenly identified innocent men. In the streets, in cities across England, they marched in common outrage at the abduction and murder of an eight-year-old, Sarah Payne. Their rage, understandable, but their fury was misdirected. I've been frightened a few times in my life, but never as frightened as I was that particular day. On that frightening day, a mob turned on 78-year-old Victor Terry in the mistaken belief he was a pedophile. I've only had three really bad traumas in my life. One was running up the beach at D-Day. The second was losing my wife after 53 and a half years marriage. And the third was this filth. That filth was this leaflet branding him a pedophile, given to all his neighbours. But Victor was innocent. It was another man by the same name who'd been outed by a tabloid newspaper. But that didn't stop local vigilantes turning this retired soldier's life into a battleground. I have so many times heard what all these vigilantes can do, you know. And I was terrified that any minute my home would have been overrun in the street, you know. What we hoped to achieve was to, to open an enormous debate into, into the whole issue. Um, and we decided the only way to do it was shock tactics. And that's what it was. It was shock tactics. Bob Warren is executive editor of the News of the World, a popular but grubby Sunday scandal sheet. Sarah Payne's murder prompted the paper to name and shame every known pedophile in Britain. Their rationale was that pedophiles have no right to privacy and parents and children will be better protected by being informed and warned. So it wasn't irresponsible journalism? No, of course it wasn't. It was very responsible journalism. It, it was what people want and we put it in the paper. But you even said it was a shock tactic. It was a shock tactic. Is you, a shock you, tactic? you never get anything done in this country without, without a shock tactic. But what followed was equally shocking. Mobs targeted anyone suspected of being a pedophile or any house suspected of harbouring one. They are not people, they are animals. And we put down animals normally. Children shouted, sex case, hang him, while their parents looked on approvingly. If the children understand why we're marching, then they're learning you know, about the paedophiles. Sylvia was one of those parents. I mean, we're not shutting them indoors and saying, you stay there and be quiet, we're all fake to do so and so. We're taking them with us to show them and to teach them that we are going after men that are nasty to little children. From day one of our campaign, in large headlines, we said, we do not want vigilantes. We don't want anybody to take the law into their own hands. But was it naive to expect that a campaign like yours wouldn't spark off we Actions. weren't naive, we knew it would. But we wanted to stop it as much as possible. So on one hand, you knew it would happen. On the other hand, you asked for it not to happen. It, you can't have it both ways. Well, you can. Well, you didn't. Get him out, get him out, get him out. Fanned by the news of the world, the protests became uglier and innocent victims were caught in the rage. I was petrified to move out of this house for about five, six days. And I was only forced out, really, by having to go and do the weekly shop. And I felt petrified. Because although people 
were probably saying or doing nothing out of turn. I felt that their eyes were burning into me. And did you feel as though your home could be targeted, your positions threatened? Everything, everything. I was petrified, as I say, coming back and perhaps finding my home in ashes. And that would have been the finish, you know. As it was, I wasn't feeling all that great. The campaign, nonetheless, did see innocent people being victimised and harassed. Well, did it? Who were they? Well, there's a fellow called Victor Terry, a 78-year-old war veteran, mm. who was mistaken for a pedophile that you had named. Well, why? We, we didn't name him Victor Terry. I'm telling you, I spoke to Victor Terry, yes. a 78-year-old war veteran, yes. who said he was terrified yes. by what happened to him. He said it was equal to the day he ran up the beach on D-Day yeah. and the day his wife died. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't spoken to him. Do you not understand the feelings understand, yes. of people who were caught up in the campaign who were innocent? Yes, but I, I think there are very, very few of them. What have the past 24 hours been like? Hell. Frightening, scary. Ian Armstrong was attacked simply because he wore a neck brace, just like the one worn by a pedophile pictured in the news of the world. I looked out the window and I was absolutely gobsmacked because it was like two or three hundred people standing outside the house. Two or three hundred people? Yeah. What were they shouting at you? Uh, they were shouting things like beast, pedophile, rapist, pervert. I'm afraid I can't accept any responsibility for that one different name, lived 10 miles away from the other guy. It's his neighbours who picked on him, not us. They yeah, seized the upon him because he, he, he wore a neck brace. I don't know, his neighbours can't have known him terribly well. In fact, they can't have liked him very much. Does it seem like a bad dream now? Seems like a nightmare. <laughs> but you don't take any responsibility for those people who may have innocently been caught up in your campaign? It's not really our responsibility. Oh, it's utterly outrageous and totally disgraceful, and the vast majority of decent people have had to suffer an appalling experience. For the police, name and shame did more harm than good, because rather than flush out pedophiles, it forced them into hiding. Well, it creates enormous difficulties. And indeed, we've got facts that show it, it, it drives offenders away, it takes them off treatment programs, they disappear. In fact, it makes the sex offender much more dangerous than, than, than if we know where they are. Chief Constable Tony Butler is the man charged with pursuing Britain's sex offenders. His officers monitored the whereabouts of pedophiles. They kept tabs, they kept them under watch, until name and shame. You've got a vigilante group in Area A driving people underground who are going to move into Area B, where there's another vigilante group driving their people into Area A. And the net effect is that I, as a police officer, don't know where these people are. Therefore, they're more dangerous uh, and, and therefore there's greater risk to children. The Chief Constable, Tony Butler, would also say that he knew um, uh, that a number of pedophiles went to ground, sex offenders went to ground, changed location. Well, it's up to him to find them, isn't it? That's his job. But that a campaign like yours made his job harder, he said, and put more children at risk. I don't know of any children who've been put at risk, does he? It, we have examples where that campaign did do that. Uh, I'm still researching the scale of it. Uh, fortunately, it only lasted for two weeks, but had it gone on, I've no doubt that we'd have been in a terrible mess now. To my knowledge, other paedophiles have changed their appearance. They have moved. They have dropped out of prevention programs. They have dropped out of relapse prevention programs. They have gone underground. This man, whom we'll call John, is a convicted pedophile. He molested four children. And like other British pedophiles, he's gone into hiding. What are you gonna do? You just keep moving, keep hiding. You're not being monitored, you're not being watched, you're not being supervised. You're a bigger bloody risk than you was when you came out of prison. So the News of the World campaign... is dangerous. Probably the biggest danger is it creates in the minds of, of, of the readers somehow an easy option to protect their children. You know, while they're running around uh, trying to f seek out paedophiles, um, 
they're not doing the more thoughtful things they could be doing to look after their children. In fact, it's giving them a false sense of reassurance that they simply know where Mr X lives, they're going to be safe. Well, that's nonsense. What do we want? People For the vigilantes, though, swept up by the emotion and the rage, the news of the world campaign was long overdue. Give it a day, Heather! Katrina, Dawn and Sylvia come from the housing estate of Paulsgrove, which saw some of the worst mob violence. But how can you arrest you a paedophile unnecessarily? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they, they would argue they've been punished and no, they haven't been, offended. No, no I'm sorry. You think of what that paedophile has done to a child. There is no way you can sit there and say that it will be harassed. They for no reason. I so mean, they have no more rights? No, no. 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 They he, took the, he took the rights of that he child the away. Of that child. They, he took their took life. took that child's innocence away. Their innocence, their life, the things they've got to cope with as they grow up. No, I'm sorry, this geezer, the, or woman, or whatever. It, no. <laughs> no, the person does not have any rights. It should be revoked. They're all man-made. But Human rights are man-made. What sort of society do we have if we don't have laws, even if we don't particularly love well, we're them? We're saying we should have laws, but they shouldn't have human rights. They, I mean, if a dog went out and bit someone, we'd put it down. Yeah. I'm sorry, but they are lower than dogs. Most criminologists believe pedophilia cannot be cured and that pedophiles should be monitored. Both Britain and Australia keep a register of known sex offenders. People know about me. The local community don't. If I was, I'd be dead or at best beaten up. But the local police know about me. The local social services know about me. It's not as though I am totally anonymous and out of sight. And John now, will always be watched, for he will always be a threat. Yeah! But whether he or any pedophile would be less a threat if their identities were made public is questionable, especially after Britain's violent experiment with naming and shaming. They actually ruined my, my life by um, naming and printing the names of these people that they put in their campaign. Did it concern you at all that innocent people did get caught up in that campaign? Uh, not on our side, they never. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. They, um, the innocent families, um, there wasn't no innocent families. I've been dealing with this on a national scale for 10 years. And if I thought naming and shaming people would, be, would protect a child, I'd do it tomorrow. All the evidence is it makes it more dangerous for children. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.